Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our biweekly briefing. We have quite a few things to talk about today. We'll hear an update from public health. Uh, we'll hear information on the work of the Civilian Oversight Board and the hiring process for the Independent Monitor. And we'll get an update on Make Music Madison, which is coming up. It is still Pride Month, so I encourage you to celebrate Pride in any way that's comfortable to you and to take advantage of the events going on around our community. Um, and lots of other things going on that I'll be announcing today. But we will start with an update from Tess Ellens from Public Health Madison, Dane County. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tess Ellens, COVID vaccine deputy from Public Health Madison, Dane County. Um, so good morning. We're ex entering a, an exciting new chapter of our pandemic response at Public Health as we transition away from our testing and vaccination operations at the Alliant Energy Center. After nearly half a million tests and over 85,000 doses of vaccines, that space will close on June 26th. I want to make, take a moment to thank the more than 150 full-time, part-time, and limited-term employees who work tirelessly to meet the evolving needs of the community at Alliant. But that doesn't mean our work is done. If you need a vaccine or a test, both are available to you in our existing public health spaces. We'll have testing available by appointment only at the South Madison office, that is at 2230 South Park Street. Vaccination is available by appointment or drop-in at the Park Street office, as well as the East Washington office at 2705 East Washington. Our full schedule is on our website at publichealthmdc.com. And now for some data updates. So there's more encouraging news when it comes to case rates in Dane County. Our current seven-day average is roughly 8.3 cases per day. Of all tests conducted, we're currently sitting at a 0.6% positivity rate in the county. We also continue to see a downward trend in hospitalizations and ICU patients, and in all cases among children. Right now, we're seeing an average of about one case per day in folks 17 and under. For vaccine update, as case rates drop, vaccination rates continue to increase. 67.9% of our county population now has at least one dose of vaccine. 78.4% of our eligible population now has at least one dose of vaccine. And more than 668,000 doses of vaccines have been administered within Dane County. It's really important to reiterate that although we're celebrating these big milestones and enjoying the return of a sense of normalcy, as a result, with the end of the public health orders, the pandemic is still not over. We know that disparities persist. 34% of Dane County's black population have been vaccinated. While vaccines have driven down infections among all races and ethnicities, we know that there's work that remains to be done in closing vaccination gaps. We are working to address those disparities through community conversations to address hesitancy and by working with community organizations that have already been trusted within their communities. The goal of these efforts is to both acknowledge and address some of the mistrust and distrust of these communities based on medical racism and historical trauma. We engage in meaningful conversations to provide reliable information around vaccines so that people can make an informed choice on vaccine. Another tool to address disparities when it comes to vaccine are our mobile vaccination clinics. From Madison to Mount Horeb, our goal is to reach every corner of this county. Last week, we had 12 within one week mobile clinics across Dane County. This week, there are eight clinics on the calendar, including two first dose clinics on the schedule tomorrow and Saturday. First at the Bayview Center for Education and Arts from 11.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. tomorrow. And then Saturday at the Cottage Grove Firemen's Festival from 5 to 8 p.m. All three vaccines will be available at both of these clinics. Everyone 12 and older are welcome to drop by, though if you're under 18, you do need a parent or guardian to be present. 
Our schedule of mobile clinics is filling up, so be sure to follow Public Health on Facebook and Twitter for updates. If you're interested in hosting a clinic at your event or business, you can also feel free to reach out to us at coronavirus at publichealthmdc.com. Thank you. Thank you, Tess. I'm glad to hear that we have so many options for people to get vaccinated. And please, if you are not already vaccinated, uh, please find one of those clinics uh, or make an appointment with your health care provider or visit one of our pharmacies and do get vaccinated. It's so important for our community. We're doing a great job here in Madison and Dane County, uh, but we don't have 100% of folks who are eligible vaccinated yet, and we really need to get there. Um, so please take care of yourselves, your friends, your family, your community, and get vaccinated. Next, I'm really pleased uh, to have an update from our Civilian Oversight Board, and I'd like to welcome Keitra Burnett and Shadira Kilfoy Flores up to the mic to talk about the work that they're doing with the Oversight Board and the progress we've made towards hiring an independent monitor. All right, good morning. It is morning, right? All right, my name is Keetra Burnett, and I am the chair of the City of Madison's Police Civilian Oversight Board, and I'm joined today by my co-chair, Shadera Kilroy Flores. We're here today to share an update on the progress of the Police Civilian Oversight Board, which we were elected to lead. We would first like to start by thanking Mayor Satya, members of the City of Madison's Common Council, and the special elder work group that led the charge to create the Police Civilian Oversight Board, which, per City Ordinance 5.20, recognizes that civilian oversight of the Madison Police Department is critical to ensuring that the MPD responds to the needs and concerns of all segments of the community, thereby building and strengthening the community's trust in the Madison Police Department's services. Ordinance 5.2 further clarifies that the purpose of the Police Civilian Oversight Board is to provide within the City of Madison a body that is independent from the Madison Police Department, authorized to hire and supervise the independent police monitor, and required to work collaboratively with the Office of the Independent Monitor and the community to review and make recommendations regarding police discipline, use of force, and other policies and activities, including those related to rules, hiring, training, community relations, and compliant processes. We would also like to thank them for designing a process that ensures the continued diversity of our Civilian Oversight Board and for entrusting us as volunteers to lead this very important work. Both my co-chair Shadira and I are confident that the passion, life experiences, education, and dedication of each individual member of our board, combined with our collective commitment to engaging all stakeholders in this work, will lead to our success in recruiting and hiring the best candidate for our city's first independent police monitor, as well as our successful design and implementation of the policies and practices to guide the work of the office of the independent monitor. I would like to quickly share a progress, um, high level overview of the progress of our board to date. We've met a lot <laughs> since our first meeting on Friday, November 30th. I'm sorry, Friday, November 20th. Our board has hosted or facilitated close to 30 open meetings, averaging three hours each. That doesn't include one on one meetings and countless emails and text messages that. Um, we have sent and received to accomplish this work. Of course, we have always kept the um, rules of open meetings in mind, so no violations there. Uh, main point is we're taking this work very seriously, even as volunteers. During this time, we have established three priorities for our Civilian Oversight Board for 2021. 
Our number one priority is for our full board and the community is welcome to join us in completing training offered by NACO, which is the National Association for Civilian Oversight of Law Enforcement. NACO is a nonprofit organization that brings together individuals and agencies working to establish or improve oversight of police officers in the United States. We've completed two of those two of three four-hour trainings, and our last session is scheduled on Thursday, July 8th. Again, all meetings, our, all virtual meetings are open to the public, and all recordings of our meetings are available on the city's website. Our second priority is completing training offered by the City of Madison's Human Resources Department regarding their hiring processes. Uh, the city's training uh, assisted, the city's human resources training assisted in our understanding of the city's processes and guided our development of the tools that will be used, used to assist in our recruitment of the independent police monitor. The training also included a review of the city's equity tool, which was used to assess the position description for the independent police monitor. And that just passed through its final approval, the Common Council, yesterday. Was that yesterday? Yes. Tuesday. Tuesday. Thank you. Um, our third priority, which is supported by the first two, is really hiring the uh, independent monitor and staff of that office. Um, and a goal, again, today is to uh, request support. We'll share an update with you and also request support from our community with the promotion of the independent police monitor job description, which uh, Shadera Kilroy Flores will now share information about. Kilfoy Flores. Um, so the general responsibilities that we uh, have agreed upon for the independent monitor, they will provide professional, managerial, administrative, and auditing work to oversee the Madison Police Department's compliance with internal policies and procedures, ensuring those policies and procedures align with research-based practices and act applicable local, state, and federal laws. The IM will review use of force incidences and oversee the processing of the civilian com citizen civilian complaints and ensure independent review of police operations. The minimum qualifications that we are looking for, the independent monitor shall have a four years experience a minimum of four years experience in public or private administration, police oversight, or a related field, and a clear understanding of the communities served. The independent monitor shall also have a post-secondary degree in a related field. In lieu of a specific degree, an equivalent combination of education, training, and experience shall be considered. Um, I just want to say what an absolute honor it has been to serve our community in this capacity. Um, and thank you for having entrusted us with this responsibility. All right, next steps. Um, we will, the position will be posted within the next two weeks, we're being told now. Uh, when that position is posted, we really ask for the full support of our community, organizations, individuals, um, groups um, in promoting the position so we can get a robust candidate pool from which to select our first independent monitor. The job will be posted, of course, on the City of Madison's website. Um, we are also currently, our board is currently working to finalize our community and stakeholder engagement plan that we will use or follow to share updates, continued updates about our progress with the community and engage you in different ways where we can create spaces and opportunities for members of our community to share your voices and perspectives about the work of the Office of the Independent Monitor. Uh, we are currently in discussion with a local organization regarding a potential partnership to support the coordination and facilitation of this work. So we would really, really appreciate all hands on deck in helping us find the ideal candidate for this role. Thank you all so very much, and thank you, Shadera, for all the work that you've done. Thank you, keep driving. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Mayor. <laughs> Thank you so much, Keetra and Shadira, and to all of the members of the Civilian Oversight Board. This is a tremendous task uh, that these folks have undertaken, and they are all volunteering their time um, to do this work. 
And so I'm very impressed with the progress they've made. And I want to add my voice to theirs in asking people to please help us recruit candidates for the independent monitor position. Um, again, that position will be posted soon. But if you know somebody that you think would be good, don't hesitate to reach out to them and let them know that we are uh, looking for somebody great for this position. And we really encourage a wide diversity of folks to apply so that the board can have some good choices um, uh, in that pool. So thanks again to, to all the members. I really appreciate that work. Uh, so now we're turning to uh, the summer solstice and Make Music Madison, and I'd like to invite Mary Rose Eckberg to the podium to tell us more. Thank you, Mayor Satya, for inviting me here today to speak about Make Music Madison. We are so excited for this year's festival. Uh, as in the past, Make Music Day will be on June 21st in conjunction with the summer solstice. This year that does fall on a Monday. This is Madison's ninth year as part of International Make Music Day. This year there are over a thousand cities worldwide participating, over a hundred chapters in the United States, as well as 13 cities in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, Make Music Day was uh, an international celebration, actually started in France, but the Make Music Madison chapter was initiated by the City of Madison and community volunteers to activate all of Madison's neighborhoods through the arts. It is still presented by the Madison Arts Commission and sponsored by several wonderful community partners who are helping to make this festival happen this year. This year we have over 300 free, fun, and outdoor performances that will be happening across the city of Madison and you can find the full schedule at makemusicmadison.org slash listings. So those over 300 performances are going to be highlighting 249 different performance performers who registered through our system this year, and they represent all ages and experience levels of the Madison music scene, from youth performers to full touring bands who are based here. Um, and we will cover all genres of music, so if, if, with any interest, you should be able to find something to your taste. We are so excited for the really broad diversity we were able to get this year, despite the fact that our planning was very you know, short term because of the pandemic, but we are very excited for the diversity that we've got. We have over 112 different venues registered to host music, and they are spread throughout all neighborhoods within the city of Madison. There are printable neighborhood maps that can be found at makemusicmadison.org slash maps, and those will be really helpful for those who are interested in figuring out how to bike or walk around their neighborhood and find local venues. Uh, hosts include everything from businesses and community centers and libraries to parks and restaurants and even little sidewalk spots, places along the bike path, and dozens of different private residences that are going to be open up that day and going to have music on their front yards or on their patios. Some suggested shows that we would love for people to check out include uh, several downtown. The Madison Central Business Improvement District is presenting music at the Forum at the top of State Street. Lisa Link Peace Park and Rotary Plaza outside the Madison Children's Museum, which will be focusing on two family shows, uh, including one at 12.30 p.m. Dwayne Keyes will be doing a free harmonica lesson, and the first 100 participants to that show will get a free harmonica courtesy of our national sponsor, Honer Music. The Goodman Community Center will host musicians from 11 a.m. to 6.15 p.m. at their new Founders Outdoor Classroom, which is situated right along the bike path. And Lakeview Library on the north side will have a bunch of different family-friendly performances throughout the day from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Vilas Park will be hosting two very special performances that we wanted to call out. One is a flower pot music performance from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. And the other is the Chinese instrument ensemble from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. You can learn all about the wide variety of shows that we will have happening that day at makemusicmadison.org. We also recommend that everyone follow us on Facebook and Instagram at, at makemusicmadison to keep up to date. Uh, we will be watching the weather that day. As of right now, it looks really good for a full day of outdoor music. And then check out around town for posters and for digital art designed by local artist Avalon Claire of the Underbelly Creative Collective. Uh, those are some beautiful artworks that we're going to be hopefully seeing everywhere as we approach next Monday. Thank you again, Mayor Satya, for having me here today.
Thank you, Mary Rose, and everybody who's involved in uh, helping to plan Make Music Madison. I'm very excited about the broad variety of music that's going to be available in our community, and uh, I hope to see some of you out there uh, listening to your favorite type of music in your neighborhood or maybe exploring a new neighborhood and listening to music there. Um, so I hope you'll join me in that. Other things coming up, I'm sure you all remember that June 20th is Father's Day. Don't forget to say hi to Dad and thank him for everything. Um, also, uh, and the theme of Pride Month, uh, we celebrate the anniversary of Stonewall on June 28th. Um, so note that as well. I have a bunch of announcements uh, of events, but I want to start with some of the reopening plans uh, that the city is working on and uh, just a little update on what's open. Um, so our, the city county building, um, as of Monday, uh, floors one and two in the city county building are formally reopened to the public. Um, so the Martin Luther King entrance, uh, the center doors are open uh, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. There's a concierge desk in the lobby now, um, at which will help you uh, get directed to any of the offices that are open on the first floor um, or connect you if you have an appointment with any of the agencies uh, that are on other floors. Um, the Wilson Street entrance is locked, but there is a guard there uh, to let visitors in if you're seeking access to juvenile detention, genetic testing, or the MPD property room. The Carroll Street entrance uh, of the City County Building will remain locked for the time being. Um, the county is still requiring masks to be worn in the City County Building uh, until July 6th, so please, we're asking folks to respect that. Um, on the first floor in terms of city departments, um, we have in-person service available at the assessor, the clerk, the uh, engineering, parks, and the treasurer's offices. Um, all of the other city offices located in the city county building are closed to the public at this time, but their services are available online by phone and by email. The Monona Terrace Community and Convention Center is open and resuming public tours starting today. Uh, you can take the in-person guided tour and learn about the history of Frank Lloyd, Frank Lloyd Wright's Dream Civic Center uh, here in Madison. Tours are available Thursday, Friday, and Saturdays at 1 p.m. There is a small admission fee, um, and tickets can be purchased online or at the Monona Terrace gift shop. Our libraries are open. Our fire stations are open uh, for community room use again. The Goodman Pool is open, weather permitting, uh, with a few continued adjustments for the 2021 uh, season. And we're asking folks who go to the pool to just stop and review the rules and expectations before they visit to learn about those modifications. Um, if you want to get more information on the pool, hours, prices, information on lessons, scholarships, online purchasing options, et cetera, please visit their website at cityofmadison.com slash parks slash pool. Delighted that uh, the pool is going to be available this summer for our community. Metro Transit uh, is still offering uh, 80, 85% 80, service, I believe it is. Um, it is still federal law that everyone wear a mask on transit. So please respect uh, that law, respect our drivers and our transit system by masking up when you get on the bus. Um, and we expect that to be in place at least through September. Um, and then in coming openings, the Senior Center will be starting to welcome guests back into the building on July 13th at a reduced capacity. Um, the Center will be officing services on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 9 to 12.30 p.m., or 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. with limited capacity through the beginning of August. Uh, and then effective August 2nd, uh, pre-COVID operating hours will resume um, that is Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. through September 3rd, again with reduced capacity. And staff are working on a hybrid remote schedule and will remain available to answer all of your questions via email or telephone. For more information on the Senior Center's plans, you can visit cityofmadison.com slash senior dash center. 
You can also stay up to date on all of our uh, coronavirus response and reopening plans via text, email, or social media. You can receive text message updates by visiting cityofmadison.com and click on Get Alerts. Uh, or follow the city on social media. On Twitter, we're at City of Madison. Also on Facebook, at City of Madison. On Instagram, at City of Madison WI. And we have our own YouTube channel, which is City of Madison. So uh, sign up, stay informed, find out about your favorite city service and how we're uh, starting to restore um, all of our in-person services this summer. It's, it feels good, I have to say, to be getting back. Um, as you heard, uh, the testing and vax vaccination operations at Alliant are winding down, uh, but don't forget, uh, actually, it is worth taking a moment to just celebrate. Um, since we began operations at the Alliant Energy Center, uh, Public Health, Madison and Dane County conducted around, they say roughly 425,000 COVID-19 tests, which is remarkable, and administered 83,000 doses of a COVID-19 vaccine at Alliant Energy alone. So that's not our whole community. That's just at the Alliant Energy Center, which is really, really remarkable. And there are more than 150 full part-time and limited term employees who worked there to make that possible. And I just have to say a huge thank you to every single one of them for making that service available to our community. It was so, so crucial uh, to our recovery. Um, but obviously, we're still offering testing and vaccination, even though the Alliance site is closing at the end of the month. Um, testing is available by appointment at the South Madison Office of Public Health, Madison Dane County, and vaccination is available uh, at South Madison or on East Washington offices of Public Health, Madison Dane County. And of course, as you heard earlier, we have a lot of mobile vaccination clinics happening. So you can find out more at publichealthmdc.com/vax. If you're not already vaccinated, please, please get that vaccine. Um, all right. Also happening this week uh, is Juneteenth coming up on Saturday. And I'm very pleased to join all of the members of the Madison Common Council uh, on Tuesday in recognizing June 19th, 2021 as Juneteenth Day in Madison. Uh, we remember on Juneteenth uh, the history of black Americans in Madison and throughout our country uh, and remember that freedom is something that needs to be fought for in every single generation. Um, the work is ongoing. I really want to thank the organizers of the Juneteenth ev events here in Madison. There are many going on. I encourage you to join one or more of them. Um, I myself will be in the parade. Um, I hope you can join me there. Um, and I really would be remiss if I didn't uh, send a special thank you to Annie Weatherby Flowers, who has put in so much time and energy um, in making sure that Madison recognizes Juneteenth each and every year. And so thank you, Annie, for all of your work. Also, uh, this year we are recognizing the inaugural civic season. Uh, the Common Council passed a resolution on Tuesday um, calling for the celebration of the civic season from Juneteenth through Independence Day. And our fantastic clerk's office will be kicking off this work uh, they'll be at the Juneteenth celebration in Penn Park this Saturday uh, from noon to five. They'll also be at our uh, Fleet Services grand opening on June 22nd. More about that in a minute. Um, but we encourage you to come out, learn about voting elections, but also how to connect with your older person at my office, how to volunteer to be on a board commission or committee, and other ways that you can get uh, civically engaged with your community. Um, and as always, the clerk's office does a fantastic job of sharing this information. If you don't already follow them on social media, at Madison, Wisconsin, clerk, that's Madison, W-I, clerk, um, you should. They're, they're very creative and getting out information. A couple of other uh, things to note. Um, as I have talked about many times, our city employees have done a really, really incredible job over the past year. Um, they really are Team City. They are why we're able to continue to provide uh, essential services in our community throughout this entire pandemic. Um, and it has been tough. 
uh, I think, for everybody. Unfortunately, due to actions by the previous administration and significant budget constraints imposed by our state legislature, some of our employee groups have fallen behind others in terms of their pay increase schedule. I'm committed to maintaining a wage increase parity amongst all of our city employees, and to that end, I've introduced a resolution that lays out a schedule to achieve that parity by 2024. I hope that this is a reasonable compromise that compensates our employees for their hard work while not overly straining our budget, and I hope that the council will join me in supporting this resolution. And speaking of that state legislature, <laughs> Uh, taxpayers here in Madison and Dane County are, and in Milwaukee are being robbed by the leadership of our state legislature. We're all paying state taxes, which you would think would be used to support our communities, but the legislature is cutting over $8 million of those funds, funds from Madison's transit aides. They are literally cutting in half our annual transportation funding. And they are trying in the process to kill the two largest economies in Wisconsin, Madison and Milwaukee. You might have some ideas about why they might be doing this. I don't know. We were really good at responding to COVID-19 while they did nothing. Uh, and, you know, we continue to work to expand voting access where they're moving in the opposite direction. But who knows? why they're doing this. In any case, they are choosing to ignore the needs of everyday Wisconsinites who depend on transportation services, our nurses, waiters, postal workers, teachers, and everyone else that is vital to getting us through the last year and who will be vital to our economy in years to come. And adding insult to injury, the legislature has a $4.4 billion unexpected budget surplus. So honestly, I don't know what they're thinking. If there's anything that we learned after the last year, it's that in the toughest times, we have to work together. This attempt to pit already struggling communities against each other while the legislators' coffers are overflowing after a year of sitting on their, how shall I say it, butts, is really a sad look at what gerrymandered Wisconsin politics has become. At every level of government, we should be investing in getting people back to work with reliable and plentiful transportation options, and that means investing in transit here in Madison and in Milwaukee. Speaking of transportation, I am fighting to bring more transit to Madison, specifically in the form of an Amtrak train. Most recently, I worked with the Mayor Gangrich of Green Bay to get eight Wisconsin mayors, including myself, um, whose cities would be served by an expansion of the Amtrak Hiawatha line to send a letter to Congress expressing our enthusiastic support for the project. Uh, we need to jump on this opportunity right now. Amtrak is interested. Uh, we have excellent support at the federal DOT, and I hope from the White House uh, president who literally rides the train and understands how important transit is uh, to our communities. Um, you can read the full letter on my blog, which is cityofmadison.com slash mayor slash blog. And if you agree that we should have Amtrak here in Madison, add your voice to ours. Uh, in other summer news, uh, our water utility is asking for wise use of outdoor water. Uh, we've got a long stretch here of dry weather, and we have uh, a well or two out of service, and that's putting pressure on our supply conditions in the water utility. So we're asking folks to voluntarily limit outdoor water use, um, and particularly to limit the amount of water that you're using on your garden or your lawn. Um, there are lots of tips for water conservation online at cityofmadison.com slash water. Um, they also have a great conservation tool um, that will help you see how much water you're using and think about how to use it better. Um, so we've also suspended our routine hydrant flushing, um, and we'll be reassessing that after we get through this hot, dry spell. But uh, we really are asking folks to help us conserve water this summer, and I hope you can do that. So many things are going on at the Madison Public Library. Uh, I'm not even sure I can 
fill you in on all of them, but let's try. First of all, the We Read program is launching in-person outdoor events for kids and families. On Saturdays throughout the summer, uh, they will be having uh, events. They're, they're called Serendipity Saturdays at multiple library locations. They're drop-in. They take place from noon to 2 and are geared towards kids age 4 plus, but we recommend an adult also. Uh, you can also find these We Read displays at all nine library locations and at the Dream Bus, where you can get your We Read bag, stickers, coloring sheets, scenes, schedules, and more. You can also get mini maker kits from the Bubbler at your local library. Um, so, so many options to get involved with We Read. Really encourage you to check it out if you've got kiddos at home. And that's madpl.org slash We Read for more information. Um, other things happening, uh, let's see, I'm going to stick with the library for a moment. The library is celebrating Pride Month. They have a new wellness guide um, and book displays in our libraries. Um, we have an event coming up on June 24th at 6 p.m., Take Pride in Your Care, to learn about creating better health and aging experiences. Um, they also have an LGBTQ plus wellness guide that you can download. And much more information is at madisonpubliclibrary.org slash pride. Uh, they also are hosting a in-person outdoor resource fair at Penn Park on Tuesday, June 29th from noon to 5, where you can get connected to community services in a fun and informal environment. For more information, madpl.org slash village. And our library is collaborating with Ford Madison Football Club to launch We Read Youth Voices Writers Contest. Uh, so if you are an aspiring writer, 18 or under, you can submit a short story, poem, song, or other written piece between June 12th and September 17th. The theme of the contest is teamwork. Um, but... You should not limit that definition to sports necessarily. Any kind of teamwork is fair game. You can learn more and submit stories at madpl.org slash youth voices. Holy cats, the library is up to a lot of stuff. Also up to at our library, an in-person wellness series called Live Well at Your Library. It starts June 27th at Penny Library. It's a collaboration between the public libraries, Be Well Miss Madison and Wisconsin Muhair. Uh, it takes place the fourth Sunday of every month at a different library, uh, June through August. We'll focus on the themes of reflection, renewal, rest restoration, and celebration, seeking to empower those who have not always felt included in traditional wellness spaces. So Sunday, June 27th, 1 to 3 p.m. on the Penny Library patio. It's drop-in, or you can stay for the whole time. Learn more at madpl.org slash livewell. So much going on. Uh, other things that are going on. We have a public information session on our alternative crisis response team, 7 p.m. June 22nd. Um, come and learn more. Give your input. You can register to participate at cityofmadison.com slash news and click on the press release. Uh, you'll re receive an email with the Zoom link to the meeting. Also coming up on June 22nd is the grand opening and ribbon cutting of the city's state-of-the-art fleet facility at 4151 Nakusa Trail. Family-friendly educational event, lots going on. Uh, the, we start at 3.30 with the ribbon cutting and then there's food trucks and uh, you can drive electric vehicles and music and all sorts of things going on. So come out and join us for that. It's gonna be awesome. Uh, all right, so many things. In possibly the best news of the summer to date, Dane Dances is back. I'm so excited. Uh, they are back on Monona Terrace rooftop Fridays in August for the 22nd anniversary season. Uh, and for a full list of events, you can visit danedances.org. Finally, if you live on or drive Maple Grove Drive, it's going to be closed between Chavez Elementary School and Fairhaven Road from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Tuesday, June 22nd. Uh, access to Chavez Elementary is going to remain open from the north. And then, as I always do, I want to end with some community resources and upcoming meetings um, community resources to help families who are in need start with United Way 211. 
Either you can call 211 or text your zip code to 898-211. They can connect you to almost anything that you might need. Uh, If you're looking uh, for free confidential local support and education uh, and you've been impacted by COVID-19, you can visit projectrecoverywi.org or call 608 237 one two five five. The city also has financial navigators. If you have financial issues related to the COVID nineteen pandemic, cityofmadison.com slash financial hotline or call eight 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 two six six seven eight oh five. Um, If you or someone you know, this one is new this week, folks. If you or someone you know uh, are one of the many FHA borrowers, if you have an FHA mortgage, um and you're having difficulty paying your mortgage due to the pandemic, please contact hud.gov slash housing counseling or call 877-622-8525 for help getting your mortgage payments deferred. We also have a housing helpline at the city. If you're homeless or in danger of losing housing, you can call 608-264-0549 or email housinginfo at cityofmadison.com. If you need help finding child care, it's 608-216-7022. If you don't have health insurance, you can still get health insurance through the marketplace at healthcare.gov. Call 211 or visit wiscovered.com for more information and help signing up. And if you need help paying for health insurance through the exchange, call 211 or visit United way danecounty.org slash health connect for eligibility information on the health connect program which might help you pay for your premiums and don't forget that our libraries have computers if you need computer access you can sign up uh, to use one of our computers at 608-266-6300 many of these resources and more are at citymadison.com Click on the community resources link, or you can visit my blog for more information, cityofmadison.com slash mayor slash blog. Upcoming meetings. Today is Thursday the 17th at 4, the Monona Terrace Community and Convention Center Board meets. At 5, the Equal Opportunities Commission meets. Also at 5, the Madison Public Library Board. Also at 5, the Landlord-Tenant Issues Committee. You're going to have to choose between those three. On the 21st at 5.30 p.m., the Plan Commission will meet. On the 22nd at 4.30 p.m., the Water Utility Board meets. On the 23rd at 9, the Task Force on Digital Inclusion Strategic Priorities will meet. At 2.30, the Committee on Aging will meet. And at 5, the Transportation Commission will meet. On Thursday, the 24th at 5, the Disability Rights Commission will meet. On Monday, the 28th at 5, the Landmarks Commission will meet. And also the Transportation Policy and Planning Board will meet. And then on Wednesday, June 30th at 4.30 p.m., the Urban Design Commission will meet. Finally, our next briefing is on Thursday, July 1st at 11 a.m., that is the, long, the end of my incredibly long list. Linda, my friend, do we have questions? We do not have questions today, Mayor. No questions today. Excellent. Well, thank you all very much uh, for tuning in, and thanks to everybody who was here. We will see you all in two weeks. Get out there. Enjoy the music. Get your vaccination. Let's have a great summer.